Yes, Walking Dead is back and the good episodes just keep on coming. Another Monday, another Walking Dead episode. Today I'm going to be reviewing Season 8, Episode 12, Do Not Send Us Astray. So right off the bat, this episode was amazing. I enjoyed the hell out of it. Um, so what's happening in this episode? The saviors are arriving at Hilltop. Morgan's having a little problem. Morgan's seeing Gavin. Um, he's having little hallucinations. Gavin's just telling him, you know what it is. You know what it is. You know what it is. And Morgan's going crazy. He's not taking it very well. Um, he does manage to send a signal to Hilltop to let them know that saviors are there. And it just kicks off from there, man. So the battle at the start, I enjoyed the fuck out of it. I thought Maggie planned it perfectly. So first she let the saviors... Um, she spoke to Simon, saying that she's got those 38 saviors and she's got 38 bullets she's ready to just let off into them in case anyone wants to try anything stupid. Well done, Maggie. For the most part, everything that she does in this episode is on point. She leaves little wooden planks in the road with nails on them to spike the saviors' tires, which stop them from getting too close to the gate. And she also, which is probably one of the sickest, I didn't actually understand until I actually thought about it and I heard them speak about it later on in the episode but Daryl came up behind the saviors killed a lot of them with his little <laughs> on his motorbike went through the gate and I used to I was thinking why did they let Daryl go through the gate for the saviors to come in Diane actually made it clear when she said that she saved the gate so the saviors would have ran the gate and that would have been their defense gone like with Alexandria and all the other places that they've ever been to. She, by letting the saviors in and luring them in, she saved the gate. So they have the gate there always and the saviors are now enclosed. You smart, Maggie. You smart. After a bit of more fighting and people dying, mostly saviors, um, she turns off all the lights, shoots out all the lights in the cars. Um, Rick comes up behind when they try, try to go into the house. Everybody gets peppered. I do not understand how Simon survived this is a bit when Maggie turned the lights on in the house and started peppering people There's no way out that was a sandwich of gunfire that I was in and remember in my last video I was talking about I don't know how the saviors are gonna fight with melee weapons when everyone's trying to shoot at them It did not go well a lot of saviors died and that was it for the most part of the battle to be honest I enjoyed it um, Simon and Dwight managed to get away before Dwight managed to hit Tara in the arm with an arrow I do not believe this arrow was dipped in walker blood. So I believe that Tara's okay. If she dies, I'm going to be upset because, as I said before, Tara is one of my main favourite characters. And I would be very upset if Lana Masterson was not in the series. You also see Maggie start having a little crisis of faith as well inside herself. A little internal struggle. Just because she sees herself becoming more and more like... Um, Gregory, there's a lot of people that say, oh yeah, Maggie, you're a great leader, you don't do this for yourself, and she's just there thinking, I just want Negan dead. The people here, the saviors that we've got here, are literally just to lure him in and make him mad, and I want them dead. And it costed her at the end of the episode, but to be honest, that cost was always going to be paid. It was amazing to see Rick come in on his badass stuff again, just taking man out everywhere. All the time Rick is just killing. I don't even know what his human kill count at the moment is. But it's well into the 50s. Well into the 50s. I know Daryl, Carol and Rick have the highest human kill count of everybody in the group. Um, but I know Rick is now just pushing like mass genocidal war criminal levels of murder. But they're saviors so it doesn't really matter. Um, the little stupid little boy, he let the saviors out which was bound to happen. I told you if Morgan didn't tell him the truth... Something bad was going to happen, and it did. He got hold of a gun, let the long head prick out, who managed to overpower him. I don't know what happened to the kid, maybe he's gone after them or something. The only thing that did surprise me is that a lot of saviors did stay behind and try to defend the place. That was like, because I would have killed them all, and now it's like, okay, maybe some of you can actually stay. Not that one that's just like, uh, he, he can go, because I, I don't want him and Maggie to be... I don't want none of this. I don't want none of this. So the saviors lost a lot of people, like a fuck ton of people. They lost maybe about 20 people. But they did even out the score in the end. Because the battle, the first battle only happened in like the first maybe third of the, the episode. And the rest of it was them recovering um, from the fight. Noticing that they do not have the ammo and they do not have the resources to fend off another large scale attack like that. The saviors definitely don't have 
any of that anymore. Um, but they did soak their weapons in walker guts. So a lot of people turned. Tobin was one of them. Um, I did like Tobin. He was one of the Alexandrians that actually fell in line and, and accepted Rick as the leader, which was the smartest thing he could have done. Um, so he died not before speaking to Carol and having a little heart to heart, which I didn't really care about because I didn't really buy their relationship in the first place. Um, so he ended up dying. A lot of people died in their sleep, so no one knew. Um, I thought it was a little bit stupid to have everyone all crowded around like that. I didn't realise that that's how people were sleeping in the hilltop because there's just no beds anywhere for anybody. But yeah, he ended up dying. Uh, Daryl broke the news that this is how people were turning. Um, they figured it out because Rick said that Negan's back was covered in blood and he didn't know what it was for. Now he knows. Um, Tara is just like his karma. She's fine. She's also, to her credit, okay with Dwight now which a lot of people were finding annoying that she was like, oh, I'm going to kill Dwight. But now it's Daryl that's like, I'm going to kill that son of a bitch. Blah, 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 blah. And Dwight technically saved her life by hitting her on the arm, which means he's gotten better with a crossbow, but it seemed like he was using like a normal bow, a long bow, um, by getting her on the arm with hopefully a clean arrow, um, he stopped Simon from actually trying to kill her properly, which is good. But yes, I love this episode. I'm going to give it an 8 out of 10. Another strong 8. The only things that I didn't really like is the fact that it happened at night time. And Walking Dead, when it's dark, it's dark. And I'm watching this episode on my phone on the way to work. It's really sunny these days. So I'm just squinting trying to make out what's happening. It's really pissing me off. And I've always hated dark scenes in The Walking Dead because... I think they're trying to get this horror feel where it's very claustrophobic and you can't really see anything. But sometimes you really can't see anything. Um, and the other thing I didn't like is that there wasn't as much Negan as I wanted there to be in this episode. Um, I wanted to see what happened with him. I wanted him to actually turn up as the battle was happening. But nope. At the end you get a glimpse of him in some sort of wire trapped by uh, Jadis. And as Simon said, saviors, if they get captured, they're supposed to get out of that. So the fact that Negan is captured means he's not dead. And that Jadis wants him alive for something. So he's probably going to get out. I don't know what kind of deal she's going to try to strike with him. But he's probably going to find out something to do. Hopefully he finds out something to do with the solar panels and the helicopter. And we'll see. We shall see. Anyways guys, I think I've rambled on for way too long. Those are my thoughts on episode 12. Do not send us astray. Uh, which was a little prayer, I think, that Sadiq tried to tell Rick when Rick was just like, don't! But if you're new to the channel, subscribe, leave a like, let me know what you thought about the episode down below, and as usual, I'll see you in the next one. Peace. Taylor about the fucking flex.